Have you ever been called a band geek, a theater nerd, cyber dork, studio rat, gamer punk, orchestra dork, book monkey, drama jock, poindexter, artsy fartsy, or just plain weird? Well then, welcome to Art Nerds. This is the podcast where we sit down with our nerdy friends, embrace our inner geek, and celebrate our art. And welcome back, my friends. This is Art Nerds. This is the place where we talk to our nerdy friends about their artwork. Today, I have with me via the internet uh, a friend of a friend. This is Michael Moses. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And welcome to the program. Thank you. That's You're good. welcome. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. I'm anxious to talk to you since we are a little pre-show chat. Um, yeah. Let's get right into it. What exactly is your artwork? What is it that you do? in the art world well i've been i graduated in 1976 with a bfa in in commercial art and started moved to dallas from graduated from university of kansas moved to dallas got into commercial art realized almost immediately that that's not what i wanted to do with my art and so i, I dropped that um went to work for an art supply company and i've actually worked for an art supply company for 40 years but my art basically is is a combination of two of my key interests: abstract art, specifically the influence of the New York Art School of the 1950s, and oh, interesting, and um, Eastern philosophy. And I, I like for each one to sort of support the other. And you know, sometimes painting's meditation, sometimes meditation's painting. It's you know, it takes a life of its own, really. And as I, I said earlier, I, I, sometimes I just try to get out of the way of it and, and, and see what happens. And uh, it's an interesting voyage for sure. It's an, It sounds like a a bit of a Zen process for I mean, I'm Okay, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. I come from the theater arts and right. uh, my fine art skills are minimal. So right. I come at this as a layman. So excuse right. me if I say something dumb. No, that's um, fine. Uh, but it, it it sounds like your process is very, like you said, meditative, meditative. And right, what is the difference between art is meditation and meditation is art, at least in your mind? Um, or is there a difference? No, there's a difference. There, there are definitely two distinct things. Uh, I would say meditation is. You know, I wrote on my website, I wrote, you know, in order to realize the self, we have to be selfless. You know, we right. have to get rid of our ego. We have to just let it be. Uh, I've been reading a book recently where the, their mantra is this very moment. Because there's no other time other than this very moment. You know, right. the past is the past. The future is not here yet. You now, it's only the very present and really just a slice of the present. So meditation is basically um, getting in tune with that, getting in tune with living in the moment. And that's, it sounds simple, but <laughs> it's actually not. Agreed. Okay. Art is being in the moment and not getting in the way of the moment. It's, it's, it's taking paints or whatever, whatever you use to create art. And, you know, it, it, it comes from you, but, it it sort of has a life of its own too. And I don't start when I do a painting, I don't start with an idea. I don't start with, Oh, this is going to be this, this is going to be that. Um, I'm not, I, I appreciate representational art. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's a dip for me. It's a different ball game. You know, I mean, I know what a tree looks like, so you don't have to, I don't have to look at a painting of a tree <laughs> to know what that is. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah, experience exactly. the tree in its, in its essence. Abstract art, on the other hand, is if you look at a piece of abstract art, you have no um, markers to tell you what you're looking at. So you have to become part of the art to appreciate the art. Now, you may hate it, you may like it, whatever, but you're going to have to figure it out. You can't just say, oh, there's a house there and there's, you know a tree there. It's like, okay, what is that? Right. And I think, and I think the other thing for me in art is the theory of randomness. Okay. Oh, and this I'm, is I'm interesting. Sort of, I'm sort of rambling here, but uh, no, go for it. Me. This is great. 
So randomness, think about this. You know, you say you got a canvas or a piece of paper or whatever, and you put one dot on the paper. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. you want to randomly put a second dot on the paper, but can you do that? Because the second dot will always relate to the first dot somehow. And in your mind, you have a relationship theory of where that dot should go. So the third dot becomes even more difficult because now you got two <laughs> dots, right? And I know it's a simple thing, but when I'm, not in all my paintings, but in some of my paintings, I try to to create randomness. And, and it's a very difficult thing because you're always, you're always comparing one thing to another. Now for you, in the creation of your art, uh, if you're working mm -hmm. on a painting or a sculpture or what have you, do you try to let go of as much in your head as possible? Or is there something that starts this off? Or No, it's, it's, I, I'm definitely going to be a part of the painting because my biases and my thought process and everything else, that's going to, that's going to come out. But what I, again, you know, if you read, I think you read some of my, my web, my, uh, mm -hmm webpage thing is that um oh and i lost my train of thought here but it's 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 being a part of it but only a part of it you know i've, I've got to move my hands i've got to put the paint on the on the canvas the pencil on the paper or whatever but i try not to some some you know some people overthink things yes you know it's like oh i, I you know they're very fastidious and this is guys, you know, I, I try to be just the opposite. I try to just let it go. I mean, a lot of my paintings are probably three paintings deep because I painted over a painting or two or three or four. You know, if I don't like it, I don't really get rid of it. I just say, well, let me keep going. You know, and it's it's the same with meditation. You know, you're sitting there in meditation trying not to think. The thoughts keep coming in your head. Right. And you said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, that's fine. You know? And you keep trying to. So you can't. You can't. You got. You got to have patience with painting and with meditation. Um, it's 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 a process that. You know when it when you do it when you get close to doing it right it's it's it just it comes out it just works out and the painting comes out and it, it speaks to itself and you know and I'm very critical of my work you know I so said maybe I could have done something but but it's that's the way it's supposed to be and that's and I. I and there's also not only knowing when to start or where to start, but when to stop. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you could go on forever. Oh, sure. You could add and add and add. So you got to say, okay, that's done, you know, and, and, and move on to the next thing. And I'm always, when I'm not painting, I'm always thinking about painting. You know, if, I, if I'm in that, you know, sometimes I'm not in that mood, but if I'm in a painting mood, and I, I'll get in a painting mood for months and then. Like I'll be out of a painting mood for months. If I'm in a painting mood for months, I'll be thinking of paintings constantly. And, and whatever comes into my mind or whatever is in nature or something that's sort of like a light or, or something like that. And I'll take that and, and I'll see that that is incorporated. You know, it's not that I incorporate it purposely, but I see that it becomes incorporated because it, it's, you know, it, it's part of me. Right. It's part of who I am. And, you know. So basic, uh, to, to kind of reword it, it's like everything you experience is tucked away right. somewhere deep in the in the crevices right. of your brain. Right. Right. And we all and, have biases. Sure. We all have biases. So so that, you know, whether you're whether you're an actor, uh, or whether you're a painter, whether you're a musician, whether you're a poet poet, all those biases are going to come out in, in, in our in our works. Sure. You know? And if you know, if you can you know what I, I know the thought I was thinking is that you know that the the you know our 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 vocabulary is a closed set. You know, we can only explain so many things in words because there's there's only so many words. Right. And if if you have an experience which the word has not been created for, then how do you relay that to somebody? Well, that's where painting and music and poetry come in. They take up the slack. So, especially abstract to me, abstract painting takes up the slack so that you know what you get when you get a good abstract painting is information which somebody couldn't talk to you about. Right. You just have to experience it. And I, I'm not, you know, 
for me, I love going to museums because, you know, I, you know, I see the pictures in books and I, you know, I appreciate it. But when you're standing in front of a really, really good painting, you, you I mean, you can feel Oh, it. right, 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 right. Yeah. You can just, it's not only visual, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's an emotional. It, thing. Yeah. I mean, well, there's dimension, it's yeah. tactile, it's, right. it's everything. And I, it's, it's, yeah, you know, I wholeheartedly, it's, it's an interesting thought because I was talking to, yeah. uh, matter of fact, the last episode, I was talking to a photographer. And he's talking right. about the idea that um, his work is becoming, at least for him, another language. Right. You know, his, uh, his take on his work as a photographer right. and a photographer right. of other artists, right. you know, his, it, it's becoming a language. And it, it, sounds like you, it sounds like the same thing that you're saying, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an extension of information. Um, that we put out in the world. Right. You know, and, and, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, and for that reason, it's so important that the arts are supported because if we don't support the arts, whether it's theater, music, right. painting, whatever, you know, we're going to lose that part of ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's, an, it's a universal thing. Even somebody that's that's not involved in any artistic endeavor needs it. They need to experience that part of the universal experience. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that keeps coming up in some of the other podcasts. There's this now. Um, before I get to that, how do you, uh, right. how in touch with you are your uh, with your audience, do you talk to your audience? Uh, do you have an audience other than I just? I do. I well, I, I did. I mean, I do, and I did, and I will. But because of the things we went through, the pandemic. Oh, sure. Uh, the the galleries I was showing in sort of closed. Right. And and I didn't try to pursue anything else. Yeah, we've all had that. But problem. I do, but I do believe that an artwork is not complete until it's seen. Until they're seen by an audience, mm -hmm. you know, because if I just paint and I just put it in my room and nobody sees it, then it's not a painting. It's just a piece of wood with color, on it, <laughs> you know, until somebody, and like I said, I don't, you know, I really don't, to me, I mean, like hate and love is, is the same thing. You know, it's, it's just as equal, just as good. You know, the worst thing is indifference. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody looks at your painting and they're indifferent. Eh, eh, okay. Then it's like, no, I just, and hopefully I never, I never get that way. But, but I'd rather either hate or love a painting than be indifferent to it. And there's some paintings that I hate that I actually love because I hate it. <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah. Cause I think, I, I think the same way with theater. For, you know, right. If it's for, good for, theater, for it's something great. To get me, right. For something to get me to hate something, they did a good job. <laughs> You know, I swear. Yeah, it's you know? like if you hate it, at least it's a good conversation on the way home. It, 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 at least you had some, you know, it made you alive. You yeah, it, it made, made you feel alive. Yeah, it, made, it, it got into your brain somehow. Exactly, somehow it did. I, I, so. I, I think I'm going to have to adopt that attitude. It doesn't matter if it's good yeah. or bad. It just it as long as you're walking away thinking about it, that's great. That's the whole as point. As long as you had some, you know, as long as it's become it's an experience. You know, granted, and we've all we've all been things as you know we've all, we've all been to go things. Oh, I'm gonna go this. I'm really excited about it. And you get there, and it's like, God, that was the worst thing I ever did. But you did it. But you did it. You know, you got out there. You you parked your car. You walked into the building, and you did it. And, and you came back home, uh, maybe wishing you had, but you know, better than sitting on the couch. Agreed. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to get uh, back a little bit to what. Okay, I think I can probably guess, but what right. what turned you away from commercial art? Well, you know, it's, it's commercial art, and, and this is the same also with commissioned art. It's people want you to do something that's in their head because they can't do it, right? They want you to create a... I don't know, a brochure, or they want you to do something or come up with some sort of, some artistic, creative thing. Uh, 
but you're not the artist. You're just the doer. You're just like the you're just the conduit, of, yeah. Of, of, of yeah, the conduit of their of their ideas, you know, which is fine. I mean, it's necessary, and and people that do it, you know, are necessary, and it's, it's a good job. But for me, it wasn't it wasn't fulfilling, and you know, you know, I just we've all had things that we did in our lives. I'm sure that it just it wasn't it. It just you know, right. we're so glad to be done with it, and you know, and I knew pretty early on that. You know that that wasn't going to be for me um so you know i couldn't make money as an artist i mean it's tough so i just worked in art supplies i ended up in my last 35 years working for a major art supply in the san francisco bay area as, as a manager I really loved it and because i got around i was always around creative people and also just as a background in, in junior college i was in the theater Oh really? So I was I was in Man of La Mancha and I was in which other. Uh, so you're like, you're an artist charity. to the core. You're an artist to the core. I'm an artist to the core, and I and I and I, yeah, and I and I, I you know I I went through the motions and I went through the college and we did that, but it was like at the end of the day it was like okay I got I got to get back to art one form or fashion. Um, I retired about seven years ago. That's when I've been doing the majority. I've I've always done art, but it's gotten more and more since I retired. I right. Time. And the the other thing too, is I don't, I don't do it for money. I don't have to, you know, I sell art, but I don't have to. And which is great because if you, if you're trying to do a piece of art because you need to put bread on the table, you know, that's going to influence your art. Right. I was going to say know? that. And, it, and it, you know, it is. Well, yeah. The idea of being comfortable enough that you don't have to do it, but you have the ability and time to do it. That's just, right. that's heaven. That's freeing. That yeah, no, that's, it's, it's such, it's such, yeah, it's such a, it's such a great place to be when you're an artist, to be able to do your art and not worry about anything else but the art itself, you know? And and I wish everybody that in their lives, whether it's, whatever it is, right. it's not the art, it could be, you know, taking a walk, whatever. <laughs> so does that promote, you know? so does that, prom so does that situation promote your, your kind of, um, Zen approach to painting then being, in the, does that help? It, it, it does. It definitely helps, you know, because, you know, although you should be able to, you know, with meditation, you should be able to meditate with distraction, you know, right? You know, because the world is not, you know, a calm place all the time and you got things going on and you got your own head going on too, but it allows you to get up at three o'clock in the morning and say, you know, I feel like painting, but I, you know, I go to work. You know, so <laughs> really there's no time. There's no time barrier. You could paint whenever you wanted to. And, and you don't, you know, and like I said, it's, you can just paint what you want to. I mean, I've painted a lot of stuff. I've thrown a lot of stuff away. And on the other, on the other side of it, uh, there's there's a there's a section on my website called garage art because I paint in my garage, right? I was gonna. And I'm glad so, we got to this. I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm painting in my garage, and, and I'm I'm like like I'm laying something down, and maybe painting over the top of. And all of a sudden, I pick up the piece that I'm doing, and I look underneath the piece that I was doing it on, as you know, just to catch the paint spray. And that is more interesting to me than <laughs> than painting I was working on. So I've got several pieces in there that were just accidental, which is perfect because really that's what I want my art to be anyways, you know? So it was accidental. I, I came up and I go, Oh, that, that thing's thing. And, you know, I might have added a little bit to it, but um, I'm looking at a piece right now and, and I just really enjoy it. You know, there's just several pieces that I enjoy and I don't, you know, it doesn't happen a lot because I don't, maybe I don't do that a lot, but, you know, you have to use a, a background to spray paint or something like that. But, um, but yeah, so I. So it's just it's, kind of the. So it's, it's close to my heart. <laughs> it's, 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 I, I don't think I sold any of these pieces, but I, you know, I just I love them. But I think that's uh, I think that's a, a testament to your artistry as an artist right. that you can pick up the the drop cloth and say that's really good. <laughs> right. Exactly. And see you it. can see it. You can see it. You can look at it. And you go, wait a minute. That's, I mean, it is, and it just, and it, and it was like, you know, sometimes it'll take me a week or two weeks. I, I don't, I'm not real slow, but a week or two weeks to do a painting where this thing happened in 30 minutes. And it's like, you know, 
And I'm, I'm spending two, two weeks trying to do the same thing. So, <laughs> and it just kind of happens. It's accidental, and it's, and it's, um, it's, that's why I call it garage art, because it just comes out of the garage. That's fun. That's fun. You also, uh, you also have a category on your website called abstract construction, as opposed right. to sculpture. Is there, right. what's the difference? Well, abstract construction, you know, one of the things that I always wanted to be growing up, another one of my, Passions, I would guess, was a woodworker. Hmm. And two things about that woodworking. First of all, if you look at painters from the 50s and 60s and earlier, they made their own frames. They did the painting, but they also framed them. They made their own frames. So if you go into okay. an art gallery, interesting, and and you and you look at the art, you also look at the frame because really the frame is part of the art. People don't people sort of don't look at the frame. They think oh, it's framed, whatever. But some of these frames, not so much today, I don't see it, but some of the frames back then were actually made when they made the painting. And so I, I, I wanted to do that, and I have done that in a lot of my, my, my art, but I also sometimes wanted to include construction, wood, you know, screws, putting stuff together. Um, there's one piece, it's called Baller, which it was just a grid with marbles inside the grid. And it just, you know, it just has color and it's form and it's, it's shape and it's symmetry and whatever, but it's more constructed instead of just painting. You know, I actually build things okay. and add it to the artwork itself. You know, it's, you know, there's things in the painting, you know, uh, so, but it's not quite a, I mean, I have to do sculptures too, a little bit. But it's not quite a sculpture because it's still kind of two-dimensional. You know, it's hanging on the wall kind of thing. Okay. You know, without instead of seat on a desk kind of thing. Would you would you call it a collage kind of work? Not a collage. Um, I'm oh. Trying to think of it as an artist that. Uh, I mean, Jasper Johns is an artist that that, that did it. Um, okay. He's. he's um, he used wood blocks and he painted the flag and he had a lot of things like that. Right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know those pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he did it. So anything like that where you're actually adding something to the surface and it becomes part of the image, but it, it takes on a more three-dimensional role, but still in a planer, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but a flat kind of way, but... Not you know, not quite you a... Look at it, yeah. It, yeah, not quite... Flat, flat. Not quite a standalone sculpture um, in the middle of the room kind of but, thing. But I'll I'll try anything. I mean, I you know, to me, art is <laughs> you know anything, and I and I really try to not have any rules. You know, that's one thing when I started painting. I don't want to have any rules. That if I look at that and I want to like, I don't know, put tape on it and, and and say, okay, that that needed a piece of tape right there, and that's part of the painting now, then that's it. You know, it's it's it's. It's allowing your, especially in abstract, it's allowing whatever comes out, whatever you, there's no rules, you know, there's no, there's no barriers to creativity. Right. You know, which I, as it's one, I guess that's one thing I enjoy because there's no barriers. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not dedicated to a certain format or, or whatever. Um, you know, I think, you know, when I, when I think of music, it's, it's kind of the same thing. There's only X amount of, notes you can play so all the musics are using the same notes right right but they're just put together differently mm -hmm. the spaces are different you know and it's but it's all the same notes same with painting or creativity everybody's using the same stuff i don't have any magical stuff that only i can use right you know? <laughs> right right okay this is this is my magic paint nobody has it but it's, it's really good it's it's yeah. whatever you got. Yeah, you know, everybody's got the same stuff. Yeah, I was actually having yeah. this discussion with my wife a few days ago. Yeah. You know, she has just started to dabble in uh, acrylic painting, just right. you know, simple landscapes and things like that. But uh, right. she loves it, and uh, we got into a discussion about you know it, you've got the tools, you've got the paints, you don't need anything right. else. You know, right. just just go for it, figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times, you know, when, when somebody's new to painting. And, and God bless your wife for getting into painting. You know, I think, oh, do I, you know, I don't, I don't do this. you know, it's like well, whatever you have, start with that. Yeah. And if you go to reach for something that you think you should have, well, you don't have it this time. So, so yeah, you make, keep going. you make do, right. 
yeah, keep going, you know, yeah. or pick up something and, you know, I mean, I've used hammers, I've used, <laughs> I've used combs, I've used whatever, you know, whatever, you know, right. and it's that, you you need to do that, you need to experiment, and I think, you know, one thing for me with some painters, some painters get into a, they get a success, they have a painting that's successful. And then they try to keep rec recreating that painting or that style for the rest of their career, you know. Now, some people yeah. do it well. Jackson Pollock does it well. Right. You know, I mean, but some people are just like, oh, man, it's just tired. It's just, it's lifeless. Right. You know. And then you're not painting went, from the heart. Yeah. Of... Yeah. I went to see a, a exhibition of... Um, Joni Mitchell, who's a woman painter from the 50s. And again, 50s to me is, I, I was born in 51, but I, I just love the 50s. Right. So it's huge <laughs> in the thing. And, and there was a retrospective. A retrospective in, in, in art is the paintings of a certain individual from early to the end. You know, mm -hmm. So it encompasses from when they started painting to the middle time they painted to when they stopped painting, pretty much. You know, not, not always. Right. And you, you and they and they had an exhibit in the exhibition in order of the years she painted it, and I liked her as a as a painter. And you saw early on, the work was vibrant and alive and and moving and this and that and it was really good. And later on, she 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 had some debilitating illness where she couldn't use her arms as much. Still painted, you know, but you could tell from the painting. And now you're looking at a person that doesn't have all their capabilities. Interesting. The person yeah. that started in their early 20s. Now, and then she, I think she painted till maybe 60s or whatever. And she, she had some mental issues at the end, you know, as many artists do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. But, but it, that journey of looking at somebody's painting from the early, especially a successful painter to early to the end, and still have it be relevant in each in each decade or each year of their life is amazing. Yeah. Because because they are still putting energy in and like like we said earlier, they're using what they got. You know? And if they don't got it, they don't got it. You know, you can still be good at it. You can still do art. Yeah. You know? I I for me, uh I my art, a lot of my art is tinkering on small things. I build theater props and puppets right. and things like that. And right. part of it for me is um, what the things that I build are, there's a million ways to do it. You know, there's right. no one way to do any of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, and so sure. I think the fun of it for me is just what you're right. saying is, okay, I need to do this. This is what I've got on hand. How do right. I get it done? How do you, I, I like, how do, you do it? Yeah, that challenge. Yeah is yeah. a, and and yeah. i i agree with you mike i mean i've seen theater sets which blow me away mm -hmm. it's like how in the world did they think of that right you know it's so different you know and i you know i've seen the same plays with different you know backgrounds or whatever right sets, you know and it makes it you know it's such an important part of it as you know of, of theater Right. You know, I think people take it for granted, but I see it. Right. I, I, I do. Yeah. I think the mass public does take it for granted, yeah. but I think that's yeah. the challenge of uh, at least one of the many challenges, but you know, it's but, like you said, it's, and I, you it, know it too, right? Yeah. You you know, when you got it, when it hit it, yeah. it did it. You go, wow. That's, that's right. worked totally. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And then you're proud of the fact that you use the most un unusual object to get exactly. it done. And it's like, I did exactly. it with that. And I'm like, right. What? How did you think of that? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was midnight. Now, <laughs> I needed something. Now, does that keep you, does that keep you up at night? What the <laughs> trying to think of, if you have something that, do you know, you got a build trying to, okay, how am I going to do it? How am I going to, Oh heaven. Yeah. If, especially with a yeah. deadline, like theater has deadlines. Right. We are, right. Of course. <laughs> right. Know, we don't exist without deadlines. Uh, right. so yeah, yeah. I, I, in those moments. Be, yeah. I and will. Then it all comes together. Same with painting. Yeah. Same with any, you know, artwork. I, you know, it's, to me, I really enjoy all, all the arts. I, you know, I, I just do. I mean, I, I just, you just, 
like you say, you feel it. Sure. You know, you just when you when you look at something that, you know, like what you do or what I do or what other people do, and it's it just comes from your essence. You know, right. that that con- is conveyed to the audience. Right. You know, whatever audience you had. You know, and like and I guess the whole you started this. Yeah, I started this audience question a while back. The audience question, and I never answered it. It's all right. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> um, I do, yeah, I, I do think that the audience is important in all art. I, you know, I just do, and and the more you can, that's why I think it's so important to have kids today. You know, either be part of it or experience it as a viewing, you know, member of ours society you know because you know i just uh, i don't know I, I sometimes i cringe at how things are cut back and what prior you know right what people give priority to and it's like eh. i but that's just me yeah you know? well i see if you agree with me on this i don't okay um art and the creation of art is innate to being a human being. I don't think we, I think it's in our DNA to create in whatever way, shape or form, whatever material. So um, when it comes to the idea of like schools cutting art programs, yeah, I, I, it disheartens me. It angers me. um, And I want to fight and I want, you know, I, I, and I get at a loss for words for what to do with it. But in those terms though, I don't think, Art's ever going to die out, you no. know. Yeah, because no, I think I, because I it's in it. it's in us. Because right. yeah. um, you know, when theater was live performance for right. millennia until the movies came around. Oh no, right. theater's going to die. Right. It didn't. It didn't. No, uh, no. Same thing with. And I agree. It, yeah, it is part of our DNA, and 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 really, you know, when you ask me, you know to do this podcast with you. I was, you know, I, I said, sure. And then the reason I said, sure, is because you got to participate. You got to be involved. You know, and if, if, if you don't, you know, if, if not us, who, right. Right. Who, who's going to bring this to the people? And, and some people will hear it. Some people won't, but you know, it, it's, it's out there. It's out. Know? Yeah. And, and it's, and it's out there. And, 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 uh, um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I think that, you know, you know, one, one question I have, I'm going to have for you. Okay. You know, you, you can think, because I was thinking about this the other day, you, you can look back at, at history, recent history, or even history, history, and, and name a lot of famous artists. But can you name any famous artists that's working today? Nope. I no. mean, not off the top and, of my head. Yeah, and no, you have to think about it. I mean, I've got one, because I was thinking about that, and I finally came up with one person, uh, a gentleman by the name of James Terrell, who works in light. Uh, and is an amazing, he's an art, he doesn't paint. He uses, you know, you know, Google him, James Terrell. Right. But he, pretty famous. But it's like, they're not famous anymore. Right. I mean, if, if I think hard, I can, you know, I can come up with some of the, the big names in the theater world. Right, no, for sure. But and that's um, good. As good as you can. I mean, right. tell me, tell me somebody's name. I don't know if I'll even know it, but just tell me somebody. Uh, Stephen Schwartz. He's a author and lyricist and musician. He wrote things like uh, Godspell and Wicked. Okay, yeah, and yeah, things, yeah. You know, I mean, that's the first name that comes to my mind. You know, Andrew yeah. Lloyd Webber. Um, well, God, but Godspell the, from the sixties and yeah, you know, hair and all those things. So you're, yeah, you're, uh, now you're now you're <laughs> walking down my road there. <laughs> you know, but these are the, you know, but these guys are Stephen Sondheim. Um, yeah. Sondheim. Yeah. He just passed away recently too. Yeah, no, I know. Um, but he is, you know, but these are the big heavy hitters on right. Broadway. Right. Right. But if you're talking about, um, any other look, artists working regionally, you know, yeah. there's, the, there's, but look what happened with Broadway too for the last two years. It was a shame. Right. You know, it just, you know, it just, how much are we never going to get back because that nothing was created for that time period? You know, and right. I know people are still creating now, and there's stuff coming out now, and that's good. And it'll all come back, but there's there's part of it that won't ever be there. Because yeah, there. And, yeah, right. I, and I hate to think how much was squashed right. because of it. Yeah, right, right, right. So, 
Um, I, getting back to the audience question, right. um, there are moments as an artist when you are working, creating, that right. there's these moments that are just, I'm there, it's beautiful, it's this little tiny light that's a one in a right. lifetime moment. Right. Um, number one, do you find do you find yourself in those moments on occasion? All the rarely? Time. All the time. It's <laughs> okay, funny. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because when I paint, okay, I'm painting, I'm almost done with the painting and and I'll I'll sit I'll I'll sit away from the easel or wherever it's I don't sit away. And I'll just look. And my bro girlfriend comes in and she goes, What are you doing? I said, I'm just looking at it. You know, and I do this for like I don't know, maybe fifteen, twenty minutes. I'm just looking at it. And I'm just sort of experiencing it before I, you know, birth it to the public. You know? Right. And <laughs> and those are the moments that it's just, it's like a it's a definitely a meditative moment, it's a quiet moment. It's just like I try because I'm even an audience. You talk about audience. I'm an audience of my own painting, right? Right. So I, yeah. So I did the painting, and I'm sitting back as an audience member now because it's done, you know. And I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to, and I don't even understand it, because <laughs> right? I mean, maybe I understand part of it, but there's part of it that's snuck in from my subconscious, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, so then I'm looking at it, thinking, okay, I wonder what that means, or you know. So I'm having the same trip. That somebody else that didn't paint it would have too, but you know, in a more personal way, probably for sure. You know, certainly. And to me, it's just like you created something. Now you can enjoy it before, like I said, before it goes into the public domain, and you can just, you know, like I said, I don't. Do you have kids? Yes, I have two okay, daughters. So when, so when your daughters were born, you probably just looked at them. Oh yeah, your baby. You just looked at you just him. stare at and him. You go, yeah, that I did that. You know, it's not all me, you know. And that's the same with the painting. Part of it's me, but it's, it's some part of it's universal. Some part of it is, you know, not me. You know, and mm -hmm. and and how do you, you know, you know, because there's some parts of your daughters that aren't you, and there's right. some parts of your daughters that aren't you or your wife. It's right. just them. So what part is that? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't. It's... You 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 can take credit. For it, but not 100. <laughs> percent <laughs> Right, but you're you know? still sitting there in amazement of right of, the, of what happened, of the, the process uh, and the thing. Yeah, and the this, same with this... me with the painting. I just sit there and I look at it and I go, you know, it's you know, really in any shape or form, it's good or bad or indifferent. No, it's just like wow, okay, and I just and I'm ready to go on to the next thing then, and is that because that inspires me to move on to the next thing. It's right. you know, and I'll get in a groove. For a long time, and they'll get out of groove. Now I've been out of a groove lately because of the, you know, the situation we're in. But, you know, I'm, I know, like it's like I, I, I can feel I'm getting into another groove here coming up. Right, you can feel it coming so in. I can feel it coming in, but I'm just, you know, I'm just letting it. You know, it, that happens by itself. I don't, right. you know, if, if if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's, you know, I mean, I'm glad to be there, but it's, you know, if I'm not there. I'm doing something else. Right so. now, in terms of that 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 spark, that moment mm -hmm. where it's ta da, mm -hmm. that we were just talking about. Right. Um, are you in a position to catch those moments with your audience? That's not you. Like, are you ever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, it's I'm just curious because. If you go if you go to a show and, and, and the artist is going to be there, you don't know you don't know really who the artist is unless you saw a picture of them. You may not know what the artist looks like, you know. So the artists themselves can walk around with you, sort of incognito, right. is which I try to do a little bit. I mean, I'm not maliciously. I'm just trying to, you know, I want <laughs> I want honest. I want I want to hear an honest thought, you know. So they might not tell you to sure. your face, but if they walk around, they may say something, and and. Many times they'll say something which I didn't even think about. You know, it, it didn't, it wasn't part of me coming into it, but it's something that's important. And so I'll get information about my pain from them. But oh, it, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't see that. I, you know, it's weird because you paint it. So you, you should see everything, but you don't. 
And some people, <laughs> some a new a new member, a new viewer will see your painting and they'll they'll have a comment about it. And when you talk about the Tada moment, that's it. It's like there's something in that painting that spoke to this person that it wasn't me. You know, because if, if it was me, I would have known that. I would have known that. I would have seen it. So that sort of validates, you know, for me when it when it's comes from a place of just you know, your subconscious or just you know a part of you know, universal, you know, a universal drive to be creative. Because like you say, it's right. in your DNA. And where does your DNA come from? Or well, the universe, right? It's everywhere. You're right. So, right. So the universe is speaking to somebody else in my painting. You know, well, I think it's interesting. I mean, since you put it that way, it's, you know, you're having a conversation with these viewers right. through your work, right? nonverbal, non-representational, right. and still a conversation is happening. So a conversation and I think that's, is happening, yeah. And I it's think ex- that's you know, and, exquisite. And, and because, again, going back to the thing that, 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 that our language is a closed set, they're only verbalizing what they can, but they might be experiencing something that can't be verbalized, too. You know, you have to allow for that. You know, so if somebody sure. says, when your painting is quiet, that may be the best. You know? <laughs> that may be the best you can have. But something's you know? going on. Yeah, but they're going to walk. On. Right, yeah, they're going to walk away yeah, with yeah, yeah. thinking about it and the experience. Right, 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 right. right. You know, and, and the thing is, you need to spend some time. You know, again, I'm, I'm, I printed out some of the things I had on my web pages to, to prepare for this thing. But part of it is that I remember going to an exhibition and it was um, I forget who the artist was, but it was a pretty famous artist. You know, and everybody was like rushing to see this painting, rushing to see this. You know, looked at it for three seconds and moved on. It's like you know, all they wanted to do was tell their friends, you know, it's like a TikTok moment. You know, oh, I saw that painting. You know, they didn't see the painting. They were right. by the painting. Their eyes were on the painting, but they didn't see it. You know, so, you know, if you if you go someplace to listen to music, to see art, to go see a play, be in the, see, that's where meditation comes back in. Be in the moment. Mm-hmm. Be in the moment of what you're doing. Look at the art. Experience the, the the theater. Listen to the music. You know, if you know the thing that the thing that throws me for a loop, you know, is people are on vacation taking thousands of pictures. Well, just look at the damn thing <laughs> you're taking a picture of. Right. You don't have to. You don't have to take a picture of everything you see. Just experience it. And, yeah, you know, I, you're, I think, you're losing I think that the experience. Me, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that drives me nuts. Um, yeah. My girls do that. They take pictures of yeah. everything. Yeah. I have maybe 20 pictures on my phone. I don't yeah. take pictures and it's just, right. I've got, you know, I'm here. Yeah. That's fine. I get You're it. You're here. You experience it. Yeah. You know, you get it. And, and, you know, it's, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not on social media for one. So I don't, okay. you know, my kids are and other people I know are, but I think it's really, sucks the life right out of you, you know, <laughs> I, I, I do, I, you know, I, because, I, I agree, <laughs> you know, and the other thing I think, and, and unfortunately I don't, in your case, you, you're, I'm guessing you're, I don't know, 32. Oh, thank you. No, I'm 55. No. Wow. You're young. Yeah. So 55. <laughs> okay. Well, so on the outside, so, <laughs> so, so I want to try to think, cause part, part of your growing up then was before the internet. Oh Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, a... that's never going to happen again. Right. Nobody's going to be born before the internet. So right. the internet's going to influence everybody's life going forward. Right. And nobody will know. And that's what I, I tell people. So, you know, nobody will know what it was like. And I'm not, you know, I'm not being an old guy talking about old times. I'm talking about a major shift and, and world order. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. When the internet yeah. It's, so it's, it's a... when you were a kid, you were a kid, you experienced things, you were, you know, TV even turned off at whatever nine o'clock. You know, but so I think I think we have to realize that, and and the internet's got it going away, and a lot of it's positive. Don't get me wrong, but I think you know, like you said, you have to you have to tell people to experience what they're doing, mm-hmm. be in the moment. Just and don't you don't have to record it. You don't have to you don't even have to uh, memorize it. Just experience it and let it go. You're right. You know? Yeah. So. Just let it be part of you. 
Yeah, that comes back to the yeah. meditation and, and, and trying to you know incorporate that because I think that you know uh, is what people need. They need to you know, and that's so be not everything to be so high tech. You know, some right. things, some low tech things are very great. You know, uh, agreed. Yeah. yeah, especially in like uh entertainment field uh, in right. the theater, it's easy to want to go high tech. Right. But I really appreciate oh, yeah. simple paper mache, low tech stuff, you know. I saw for lack I saw, of a better term. I saw uh Ex Miserables in New York. First Broadway play I ever saw in New York. I was out there on a convention and the company I worked for bought tickets. I I, I couldn't have bought tickets. I didn't have the money. They bought <laughs> tickets. But the set for that was incredible. Was that and the I, big turntable one where the it big turned? turntable thing? Yeah, it was just it was amazing, and I, I just you know as you know I wanted to see the play, but I just kept looking at the set too. It's like <laughs> oh my god, you know because yeah. you you have to you have to create you know that reality, and it's got to come across in in sticks and paper, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever you know. It's just amazing. So you know, I, again, did you ever act, Mike? Did you oh ever, yeah. You ever, okay. I've I've done so, a little bit of everything. So I've been a actor, director, writer, okay. designer. So you ended, you ended up as set director then, mostly. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Uh, set designer and uh, director set at this point. Director. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, I look forward to seeing seeing some of your work then. Yeah, absolutely. Where, are you in Bloomington? Uh, no, I'm in Champaign, just oh, south Champaign. of Bloomington. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Friend yeah. of mine went to Champaign. Yeah. A few of I, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's us. Yeah. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, ask, okay. I want to ask you a couple more questions, just kind sure. of a rapid fire round kind of thing. Yeah. What about your artwork and your process, and what about it turns you on? Uh, the thing mostly turns me on is is it's it's an open it's an open canvas. It's it's a blank canvas. You know, I I love a blank canvas because that it could be anything. You know, that at the end that blank canvas that I'm looking at. I don't even know what it's going to look like, but when it, it becomes what it's going to become, that's the best feeling. It just, it just, there it is. It went from that to that. And and how did, how did that happen? I don't even, I can't even tell you, you know, but it did. You know, I just know you just do it. You just wake up and you know, you just do it. And then it, it transforms things. And it's like transforming, you know, iron into gold or something. <laughs> Great. Well, in I a way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anything about your artwork turn you off? Yeah, I can tell when I'm trying too hard. I, I hate that. Oh, yeah. I hate it. I just, I hate it. I just, you know, I'll look at someone and I just, I'm, I'm just, I just want to like, scream. Like, what the <laughs> hell? You know? But, I, you know, I, it's part of the process. So. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think we all have our ups and downs in that area. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And absolute last question. Um, yeah. Where can we see some of your art? Well, you can go to my website. A lot of it's old. It's michaelmosesartist.com. And you okay. can see a lot of stuff we were talking about today. Hopefully, by the end of this year, I'll have some more pieces in there. I'm not sure what this is going to be. It's probably paintings, maybe some things. Um, nothing in galleries right now, because again, because of what has been happening. So hopefully, maybe next year, they'll come back. And okay. And uh, you know, if that does, I'll, uh, I'll shoot you some text and you can let your listeners Okay. Know. Will you uh, put anything on your website about gallery showings? I will. Yeah. Anytime okay. I have a gallery showing, it gets on my website. So okay. Great. Take an Fantastic. Look at it there. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's been great to talk with another artist. Uh, I wish we had, I mean, I could talk a I lot know, of stuff. <laughs> I could get off, I could go down subject too. So <laughs> that's dangerous. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah i have a feeling we could go on for a few days exactly. here <laughs> exactly. so, yeah anyway. michael i can't yeah i can't thank you enough for spending yeah, the for afternoon sure. with me this is uh lovely to talk to you and lovely That's to meet fun. you and yeah, like fun. i said we we should do more of this soon yeah. shoot me shoot me a link to the to the thing so i can yeah sure it. will so friends. Okay. okay mike yeah i yeah. appreciate you and i appreciate your time i appreciate you too thank you stay okay. on the line for me okay I will. Thanks for hanging around and geeking out with us. If you enjoyed the show, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And more importantly, join the conversation and leave us a message or comment. We'd love to hear about your nerdy art. 
Thanks again, and join us next week for more Art Nerds.